This story begins with Zhang Ye, who blames himself for not having friends and not having parents who worries for him. Tired of playing, he goes to sleep. But when he opens his eyes he sees a horn girl and he asks what is she doing in his house. But she says that she is not in his house so he takes a look around and he thinks he is hallucinating. Zhang Yi notices the other people and realizes that he has been set to another world. And the girl asks the priest if he really is the true prophet. And he says that the prophet must be carrying a magical ring just like hers. Zhang Yi shows his ring and realizes that she also has another one just like his. She can't believe that someone without magic powers could be the prophet and she also gets mad because he belongs to the human being tribe. Zhang Yi says that he doesn't understand anything and he says that he bought that ring in a street store. So she tells the priest that he can't be the prophet since he is so weak. But he says that there was no mistake summoning him. And Zhang Yi will be the prophet that will save demon tribe of being extinguished. Zhang Yi not knowing what's going on, asks them to tell him what's going on. So the girl introduces herself as Isabella Osa the demon queen and she says that that day they were going to sing a peace treaty with human beings but she didn't expect that that her commander Lillian would betray her with the help of other humans. And while being disarmed she took a big part of her magic powers. But she could stay alive thanks to the sacrifice of her four stronger subordinates. Hearing all that and seeing that he is in another world. Zhang Yi was planning to become the protagonist of the story. He asks why doesn't she hide on the mountains. But the other girls say that they are escaping from humans so she summoned the prophet so he could help her but they were disappointed since he was useless. In that moment Isabella starts to feel bad and she transforms into a girl looking like a human being. And the priest says that this is because her aura has depleted completely. And they blame Zhang Yi because she used all her energy she had left to summon him. In that moment some gentlemen say that the humans are already inside the realm and they escort Isabella so she can manage to escape and the priest would stay to buy them some time so they can manage to escape. Isabella tell him to escape with them but the priest is already preparing them to teleport. Isabella crying tries to take him but he already took them to another place. In that moment the door is destroyed and Tal's Angus appears asking where the demon queen is. But she was already gone and planning to take revenge so they decide to flee for the moment. But they were attacked on the back by the humans and the girls are planning to sacrifice themselves so she can escape. Zhang Yi promises that he would protect Isabella so he grab her by hand so they could escape. But she wanted to stay and fight and die with them. Zhang Yi says that she does that. Their sacrifice would be in vain. So Isabella crying sees from afar how everyone dies so she could escape. On their way they come across with some human knights and Isabella gets off Zhang Yi's hand and she attacks the knights for killing her subordinates. Zhang Yi stops her and apologizes. And a knight says that he heard that demons used to wash human beings' brains. They were planning to kill them because they thought they were working for the demons. But Zhang Yi on his knees says that they are not working for them and they were not brainwashed. Isabella wanted to kill him for making her kneel before a human being but he says that by doing that they could survive so then they could take revenge. But the knight wanted to kill them anyway so he could get a reward. But there is that guy who stops him and order him to go with his squadron. A knight noticing that he was the white squadron leader didn't want to listen. But being a leader he had authorization to kill. Then the others noticing that. They decide to escape. He introduces himself as Sophises, the white dragon knight squadron leader and he asks them when the demons captured them. Before that, Zhang Yi thanks him for saving them. But Sophises order him to answer first. Otherwise he would kill them. He says that he was captured when he was 5 or 6 years old and he introduces Isabella as his wife and says that she was also captured by the demons and Sophisa ends up believing him and he offers his cape so he could cover himself since he was naked and he would take them to the human being tribe city but Isabella didn't want to go. Zhang Yi convinces her to go. And the next day they arrive to the city where Zhang Yi gets surprised by seeing how the humans respect the knights. Isabella changes her name to Yibei so she can't be recognized and on their way. They get across with this guy from the royal family, called Talsberry. When Sophises sees him, he order his knights to go to the royal palace. Zhang Yi asks who he is and a knight says that he has a higher rank than Sophises by being a regent's son. He says that the current king is very young and the regent supports him making decisions. So he is above every man. Sophises greets him politely. But when Barry notices that he is not the Red Dragon's knight's leader, he despises him. But Sophises ask him why the Red Dragon's knights were ahead of them. That they were supposed to sing the peace treaty with the demons. And he says that the new king's orders were to kill the demon queen. Then Sophis's father who was the imperial leader arrives. He is called Gurodita, and he says that he heard his son was in town and he decided to show up and say hello. Zhang Yi is amazed by the fact that Sophis's father was someone important in the kingdom. A knight tells that Guro is close to the king and also he and the regent has very different political points of view. In that moment trumpets can be heard since the Red Dragon's knight squadron arrival. They were carrying the priest's head impaled in a sword. Watching that, Isabella wanted to kill them all. But Zhang Yi calms her down and while watching Angus, promises that H will kill him. 
Angus thought that Giro came to welcome him but he says that he was going to see the king and both decide to go together. His son Barry gets close to him but he threatens him and says that if he keeps on playing he will kill him and they went without him. Then both decide to get out from the human realm and they take them to their new home. Zhang Yi is surprised by the fact that it was so big. In that moment some servants appear. One of them introduces herself as Alina and she was going to feed them. But Isabella asks why Sophises is being so nice with them even when he barely knows them. On the other hand, these two presents themselves before the king who was just a boy, and he congratulates Angus for having completed the mission he assigned to him. But Giro says that what Angus did was a crime, because the mission was to sign a peace treaty with the demons, not killing the queen demon. He also says that if the missing demon queen returns to the demon tribe she will bring war against humans and they will lose a lot of people. Angus says that before they could sign the peace treaty, Lillian told him that she had her people's support to rebel and that if they helped her become the new queen, she would make a strong relationship between the two tribes. Then he delivers a letter to the king about what they had agreed with the queen. After reading it, he congratulates him for doing well his job, but Giro says that there's a mistake because he does not believe the demons agreed so easily to accept their new queen. The king says to leave everything in Angus' hands, and being the king, he obeys, making Angus happy and Guru sad. Then we see Zhang Yi taking a bath and asking himself how to get back to his world because he doesn't want to be in this world since he saw so many people die before his eyes. Then Sophises arrives to take a bath with him, and Zhang Yi thought that all that good treatment they were receiving they were going to take it back slowly, but he came to tell him that they were going to send people to look for his family. And Zhang Yi lies saying that since when the demons brainwashed him, he can't manage to remember anything from his past. Sophises tell him that he had a brother called Sophisak and the demons captured him and he asks Zhang Yi if he knows him. But Zhang Yi says no because there were a lot of human slaves in the demon's tribe. Sophises gets sad but Zhang Yi cheers him up by keep talking and Sophises says that Lillian became the new demon queen and then they keep talking about how his father and the regent aren't getting along. And when they finish with their bath, Alina takes him to his room. And when the door opens he finds Isabella changing her clothes. She was nervous at the beginning but she closes the door rapidly and she says that he should stop treating her as the demon queen since Alina had been watching and since he told everyone that they were married. They put them both in the same room, so they should behave as a married couple to avoid suspicion. Then they hear someone approaching and it is Alina, so they start making love to make Alina leave. But they were only making sounds to fake it. Zhang Yi was taking it too far so she hits him and makes him go to sleep in the floor. Zhang Yi asks her how to get back to his world and she says that she doesn't know, making him sad. But he remembers about the rings and he asks Isabella for hers. He put them together and tries to get back on his own but all in vain. On the other hand Alina finds Sophises and he tells her not to interrupt Isabella and Zhang Yi. Alina asks why is he helping them and he says that when he knew Zhang Yi he felt a familiar connection and he thought he was his lost brother since he resembles so much. Alina says that she was happy for him since she hadn't seen him smile in a long time. Sophises throws her in bed and as reward he ends up making love with her. The next day Zhang Yi wakes up and Alina gives him new clothes. She realizes Isabella is not here so she goes outside and tries to find her. She found Sophises training with his bow on her way and she is amazed about how good he is. Then she saw Isabella as well practicing and she is blown by how good she is. She lost her powers but not her abilities. Then Sophises invite them to eat but Zhang Yi wanted to leave the human kingdom and says that he doesn't want to bother. Sophises say that there is no problem, that they can stay and live in his mansion forever but Isabella says that they want to manage by themselves and they didn't want to bother anymore. Sophises say that they cause no trouble and he can find a job for them in the kingdom but Isabella says that she rather goes back and work for the demon tribe than working for them. In that moment we see a story when the humans were terrorized before because they were weak. Then tired of that, they reached out a powerful dragon to protect them. The dragon accepts, helping them with everything. As a sign of gratitude they use the dragon as a deity, creating dragon knight squadrons of different colors. We focus on the white dragon knight squadron which is the king's personal cavalry. And there are two ways get into the squadron. One is to demonstrate that strong enough and worthy to serve the king and the other way is by obtaining a diploma from an honor school in the capital. She says that she wants to be an honor student in that school to get stronger. And Zhang Yi thinks that was the only way to get out the human kingdom. She says that she wants revenge and Zhang Yi scared covers her saying that they want to save other human beings that are trapped within the demon tribe. Sophises says no because fights are not as easy as he thinks but Zhang Yi says that he has other purpose by joining the school. He says that after he graduate they want to help him and his father to lead the human tribe to the top and give return them the favor of helping them. Sophises end up believing him and they accept to enrolling them into the school and he noticed that Isabella had talent for the school but he suggests Zhang Yi to cook rather than fighting. 
two months after Sophus's inscribe them and explain the different branches there are in school. He also says that there is a professor who will evaluate them to decide what branch is better for each one and a knight is assigned to guide them in school. Before he go he says that if they don't manage to pass the selection test, he will take them back to the mansion. Isabella and the other one make fun of him but Zhang Yi is intended to pass the test. In school on the melee branch, Master Mike Yasa was going to teach them a technique, and this guy's ask him to show the technique before everybody. Mike gives him a rock and asks him to hit a statue with all his strength. He destroys the statue a bit and Mike asks to show the rock but it was already destroyed. Mike says that in order to learn the technique, he has to attack with all of his strength but the rock must remain intact. The guy says that it is impossible. Mike grabs a little bird and with all of his strength he destroys the statue and he demonstrates that the bird is still alive. His students are amazed and are asking to themselves how he did it. Zhang Yi surprises him and the knight introduces them as students who are going to take the entry test. Mike asks if he wants to join his branch and getting angry he activates a fierce power scaring them all. But he realizes that Isabella didn't get scared and he proposes her to join his branch but she refuses since she wants to join the magic or sword mastery. The knight thought that Zhang Yi was also fine but after he touched him he ended up fainted because he couldn't hold the mic's fierce ability. He wakes up after a few moments and he is told that he failed the test. Zhang Yi was happy about it because he didn't see himself training for that every day. He introduces himself to this guy to be his friend. The guy introduces as Alex Air and accepts being his friend. He says goodbye because he had a fight class to attend and the knight agrees to take them to magic and fencing. Then we see a training field where Dorona, the fencing teacher and Wadley AC, the magic teacher were fighting to decide which branch would use the training field. Both were equal in powers but they kept fighting and they use a powerful attack but gets deviated and almost killed an old man. But Zhang Yi manages to save him by a hair and he was terrified because if the attack would have reached him, he would be dead. Dorona points him with the tip of the sword and asks him who he is because she never saw him by the school before and Zhang Yi says that he helped the old man from dying but when he turned to see him, he was not there anymore. The knight says that he is Sophus' friend, and when she heard that name she was desperate to see him but the knight says that he didn't come and angrily she asks why they were there in her branch. He explains that they are new students and they came to take the entry test but before that they are going to measure their strength. AC gives them a sphere to measure his strength and Zhang Yi not knowing what to do with the sphere he asks the knight and he starts explaining. He says that the sphere reveals how much limit power there is inside each person, and that limit power is how strong can a person be with training. If their power limit is low in both magic and fencing they will be rejected. Isabella grabs the sphere and when Dorona notices that there is not any shine representing her power, she was going to reject her but in that moment the sphere starts to shine with a strong light. Everybody is surprised by the fact that she had so much power and AC asks if she had learned magic before and Isabella says yes but for any reason she lost her magic. AC accepts her into the magic branch but Isabella goes to the sword and she says that she is hesitant between magic and fencing. Dorona underestimates her saying that she wouldn't make it to her branch but Isabella tells that she studied fencing abroad and she wanted to take the test. She accepts and sends Barry to fight against her as a test. And before they start fighting she explained the rules and one of them is that they can't use all of their limit powers and after the whole explanation Barry starts attacking them. But Isabella avoid his attacks easily and Barry continues attacking her. But no attacks manage to reach her. Isabella gets close with one attack and uses an incredible ability to make him get back and making him angry so he uses his limit powers and attacks. But this guy called Legend stops the attack saving her and Zhang Yi thanks him for saving his wife surprising everyone there by letting them know that they are married. Dorona gets mad with Barry for using his limit powers and on the other hand she presents her most powerful apprentice and he was eager to see him as Isabella fight partner in the future. Dorona asks if her abilities were learned from Machia and her answer was yes, surprising everybody because Machia was known as the sword god. Dorona sees that she is very strong and accepts her as his student but AC says that she is her student, starting a fight to decide which one of them she stay with. But Zhang Yi interrupts and asks for the sphere so he can measure his powers. He thought that he would have a big power to become the protagonist of that world. But minutes passed and the sphere wouldn't start to shine. Not even a bit. And AC takes the sphere from him saying that she already knew the results since the beginning, calling him a useless piece of wood. The other students also starts to mocking him and the knight explains that the term useless piece of wood is a person that has no power limit, making him sad. Isabella yells to the other students to shut up, if not they would have to face her. Zhang Yi hears that, recovers and says that even if he has no powers, Isabella would always protect him. And before he goes to try another branch he cheers her up and wished her luck in whatever branch she chooses. On his way, Zhang Yi asks the knight if he could join a branch without having any limit power. He says yes but for now. 
he can't choose a fighting one. After a bit of walking they reach the forging class where he see that they were drawing a sword. But their drawings were terribly bad. Zhang Yi thought that in forge classes you would have to be hammering all day to create objects. But Master Ashton Martin says that he doesn't know anything about forging. The knight explains that he was captured by demons and he doesn't know anything about forging and Martin shows him how the forging is in the human tribe. Meriton grabs an enormous brush and draws a sword in the floor and with one word he makes the drawn sword merging out of nowhere. Martin says that this is how humans create things and if he wanted to forge he had to have a gold alignment crystal. Xiang Yi not knowing what that is, he asks how to use it. Martin explained that with those crystals he can create things just as he saw with a magic brush. And Xiang Yi gets sad because he thought that he needed limit power to use it. He says that limit power is not necessary in the forge. Hearing about that, Xiang Yi kneels and asks him to teach him how to forge. Martin asks for a drawing as tests and he draws Dorona's portrait, surprising everyone with his drawing skills. Martin accepts him as his student and before joining a partner he says that he has to know the rules of forging classes. He says that he must be very careful with what he creates and be responsible if something bad happens and he cannot create living objects. Zhang Yi accepts and thanks Martin for accepting him into his branch. And Martin gives him a brush so he can begin with his classes. Later on, Guru arrives very angry to the king's palace, where he asks for an explanation on why the regent wants to execute the agriculture minister and the leader of the Grey Dragon's knights. Angus says that the agriculture minister gathered with the East Beast's tribe and the Grey Dragon's knights leader ordered to bring food to them. Duro says that they did it because that tribe was struggling with drought and food, so they sent food to be able to get along with them. He asks to reconsider that decision of killing them but Angus shows him that some beats were already captured and one of them will be the sword god. Machia, he also shows the heads of the agriculture minister and the grey dragon's knight leader. The king is confused and asks Angus why he did it. Angus says that as the king is a good person, he did the dirty job for him and he also said that knights from the black dragons and red dragons are on their way to the east tribe to extinguish them. When Guru hears about that he asks the king to stop that before it caused more tension with other tribes. But the king is afraid not knowing what to do. So this guy let the chains off on purpose and Machia noticing that his powers were coming back, shouts that he will not let his people and his tribe to be extinguished and attacks the king to end everything. But Sophuses stops his attack and he stabs Machia ending with his life. And this guy's get near the king to see how he was and he gives the final blow to Machia. The king gets petrified, scared by that beast and Guru realizes that everything was planned by Angus, who accepts it with an evil laugh. After that, Zhang Yi is walking towards some portals, and not knowing where they would take him. He asks a knight, and he tell him that those portals takes you from the academy to the residence. He also explains that if he wanted to keep studying in the academy he would have to live in the campus. Zhang Yi asks why he doesn't return to where the knights are, but he gives him a key and says that if he doesn't want to live in the campus, they would teleport him back to the mansion. But if he wants to live there, the knight would live with him. Zhang Yi is a thankful act. He will try to find Sophus's brother when he get back to the demon tribe. On the other hand we can see Sophus's with Giro going to the king to try and make him reconsider some things when making important decisions. When they arrived a knight told them they already knew they were coming but the king orders were that only him and Giro could be in the room. Giro tell him to wait outside. Getting in alone and Sophus's had a bad feeling about letting him in alone. Giro called the king but he wasn't there, and Angus appears from the shadows and says that he sent the king to practice archery. Giro knew that this conversation will not end well. Sophuses was still waiting for his father and this guy called Sato appears and talks about the Wither Dragon's knight squadron should be led by the king but being just a child. That power had to be passed to the regent. In that moment Sophuses realizes that something wasn't right and after seeing the knights he was planning to enter the room but Sato stops him. Sophuses with a sword in head asks what will they do to his father. Nothing says Sato, because Angus is inside and he is making him see the true state of the capital. Sophuses asks more questions but Sato leaves. On the other hand, Zhang Yi decided to stay in the north campus and when he opens the door, he finds Isabella changing clothes again but she doesn't care since he already saw her before. Isabella talks about how good they are treating them in the academy but Zhang Yi suggests escaping the academy, but she refuses because the academy controls their students very well and they would notice that they are not in the room. She explains that the academy has a magic field surrounding it and in her state she would not be able to break it. Zhang Yi asks her for another plan and she says that they must wait until she gets stronger in the academy. She also said that the demon tribe only accepts strong people as leaders, not somebody weak. And she gets sad. When Zhang Yi sees that, he promises her that he would take her back to the demon tribe so she can be the queen again, saying that he chose the forging branch because it is destined to be powerful. 
Then he asks her what branch did she chose. Isabella says that she chosen both so she could recover her strength quickly and both teachers accepted. Zhang Yi takes advantage of the conversation to get into the bed and they kept talking about how they could become stronger quicker. Then when she saw him on the bed she asked him to leave but Zhang Yi says that he is just pretending to be a married couple, making her blush. They keep talking but Isabella throws him out threatening him with a sword and he goes to the floor where he starts thinking about things he can create with his magic brush. The next day Isabella wakes up and when seeing a silhouette in front of her, she grabs her sword asking who is there. But when she sees it well she realizes that it is a statue made by Zhang Yi and after getting out of bed she sees other objects, asking to herself what could it be. Then she hears some noise in the living room and she realizes that there are other creations made by Zhang Yi and she was planning to ask him everything about those creations in the night. In Forge class they were waiting for Zhang Yi but as he didn't arrive they were about to begin with the class. But in that moment Zhang Yi arrives with a bicycle and everyone is amazed by Zhang Yi's creation. Because in that world vehicles boost by human didn't exist. When Martin sees the bicycle he gets on the bicycle and Zhang Yi teaches him how to use it. It gets complicated at first but later he managed to drive it. Then Martin destroys the bicycle for not breaking, leaving everyone disappointed because they all wanted to try. Zhang Yi promises that he would create another bicycle but he couldn't in that moment since he ran out of gold alignment because he spent all night trying things. Zhang Yi realizes that the forge works with thoughts and he asks to himself what would happen if he built objects from his world. So he built a cell phone as a trial. But it didn't work since he doesn't know how cell phones work and he kept on building useless technological stuff because in his mind he didn't know how they worked. Then they get back to the class where Matten gives him another gold alignment stone and he was going to explain how to differentiate gold alignment stones and its uses. Martin gets his briefcase out from the forge and she explained that they can use the stone just like a blacksmith does but that would harm the user. He says that two decades ago he was visiting the dwarf tribe to improve his forge and he saw that they made really beautiful objects. But the one creating them suffered damages to his body because they used hammers just like the blacksmiths did. After Martin's big research, he realized that they could use the stone in a very little form by embedding it into the brush and drawing objects to be created out of nothing. Xiang Yi doesn't understand completely so he asks Martin where the gold alignment stones come from. Martin says that they form inside a mine in the capital's border. But the problem is that a powerful golden dragon lives there. The king used to send the Purple Knight squadron to collect them and they would refine the stones and sell them to finance the military. Martin says that each stone cost 10 golden coins and everybody is shocked by that because they were too expensive. Zhang Yi doesn't know what 10 gold coins worth and one of his school partners explains that 500 people can be fed with 10 gold coins for a month scaring him because he used them deliberately. Then Martin says that that's the lesser range stone and he shows them a range of stones going from the lesser ones up to the better ones which can reach a price of 50 gold coins. Then he explains that stones differ by color, like the red one which uses fire as base, but they worth up to 500 gold coins. Then he gets his magic brush out and he explains the limits of his lunar stone and how rare it is. He is the only one who has one in the capital. Then he tell a story about when he was young studying the forge with the dwarves, but they weren't as sociable but later on they acknowledged him by realizing how determined he was. The dwarves had four lunar stones and they gave him one of them as a reward for obtaining many achievements. With that stone Martin built the walls protecting the capital and explains that the power of a lunar stone is infinite but has a price and that is that extracts the user's consciousness. One of the students says that this side effect must have not affected the master because his looks pretty healthy, but another student points towards a photograph where you can see a handsome guy, and that was the master 10 years ago, and the students are in shock by that because now he is bald and ugly. On the other hand Sophises is with his father, but he arrived home very upset saying that everything was over, worrying Sophises for what they could have done to his father. On the other hand, Isabella was training fencing and by the end Dorona congratulates her for training more than the others, but she felt bad because she got tired easily because that didn't happen when she had all of her power. Then she goes home and she finds all these stone sculptures of both of her masters and she realizes that they were made by Zhang Yi. Isabella takes a blueprint and Zhang Yi says that those were dwarves tribes blueprints where they were creating steam machines, surpassing the intelligence of the demon's tribe. Isabella kicks him and warns him about creating too many things, otherwise their identity would be exposed. She also scolds him for creating a sculpture of her and her masters, and thinking about what disrespectful things he could do with them she hits him even more. The next day he was happy because the steam machine worked and he could create a powerful mecha. Did he see that his fellow students were gathered in a place and one of them says that Master Martin went into the gold alignment mines, and that was because when they went to buy stones last night, the prices were too high. Martin tried to convince them to sell them and a normal price but they didn't want to because they needed a lot of money for military services. So an angry Martin went on his own, 
to look out for stones but his students were worried about him because he was just a forging teacher, and he alone could not take down a dragon. Seeing he was going for help from the other teachers but one of his friends stops him because they were in an audience with the king. Seeing he was very angry for doing nothing about it and then he sees Alex and he offers him money and tell him to go and buy one gold alignment for his magic brush. Seeing he builds a car with that to go and save his master. On the other hand, Martin is arriving to the mine but one of the knights didn't want to let him through because only purple dragon knights were allowed to enter the mine. Even with all that Martin gets in and starts looking out for gold alignment. Then we see Zhang Yi and the others arriving the mine and planning how to get in to look for their master. But then an explosion occurs and they see dust coming from inside and Martin getting out from it with the gold alignment. He also defeated some monster with the weapon he invented with the dwarves' help. The guy was happy with his gold alignment but they could use them already because they needed to be refined. But the problem was that the refinery team worked with the purple dragon knights. And in that moment some knight surrounds them and the refinery master calls him out for getting into the purple dragon knights territory. Martin also calls him out because those monsters weren't that strong to justify the price increase of gold alignment. The guy says that it was not his business and give the order to kill them so they could take the gold alignment. But Isabella together with Martin and Alex were defeating almost every one of them but the refinery master steps in attacking Alex but Martin protects him and his weapon get destroyed. That guy uses a special slime creating many clones and he planned to attack them but Zhang Yi had finished his creation. Zhang Yi is completely covered by the rocks and the refining master attacks the others but Zhang Yi inside the rocks neutralizes him using a powerful attack. Then he throws another attacks to the other master but he manages to deflect it hitting his knights and everyone is surprised to see a mecha getting out from those rocks. The purple knights get scared to see that mecha and Martin is surprised even more because the dwarves wanted to build something like that but they couldn't but Zhang Yi did. The refining master attacks him with everything he got but no attacks could manage to damage that mecha and Zhang Yi starts defeating those knights and capture the refining master and threatens him saying that they must not mess with them. And we can see that the ones behind all that mess were the regent's family, since they wanted to earn more money. They was planning to raise their prices of gold alignment. But a soldier arrives saying that the forge branch gathered the gold alignment and also they captured the refining master, surprising everyone. Zhang Yi and his group arrives to the kingdom but the purple knights won't let them through and behind them were the people who raised the prices and they ordered to capture them for breaking the law by collecting gold alignment without any permission. But Sophises arrives with other guys and says stop and he tell Barry that the king sent him to stop Martin. Barry doesn't buy it but legend being his uncle, he releases his power, making him obey the new orders given by the king. But this also affected Zinag Yi, which ends up being amazed by that enormous power. Being just his nephew, Legend warns him not to be so careless just because his father is the regent. Because for Barry he was only a piece of trash. Dorona also scolds him for not going to class and Martin asks officers to arrest him but he denies because the king never gave that order since he cares so much about him. Zhang Yi thanks officers for helping them again and he told him not to do that again because he doesn't want to see him die. On the other hand, AC tells Isabella that she picked her to represent the magic branch in a festival. But she fights again with Dorona because he also wanted her to represent the fencing branch. Sophises ask Zhang Yi to go with him to the palace. And once there they talk to the king about the gold alignment price increase. In that moment Angus arrives informing the king that he discovered that the purple knight's leader is increasing the price of gold alignment. He also said that he already punished him and suggests the king that the forge branch should be in charge of collecting gold alignment stones. Everybody is surprised by that and the king asks about the military budget. But at the moment he suggests that the white dragon knights should handle it. Zhang Yi asks himself why Angus is helping them and the king accepts those suggestions. And he asks a favor to Martin to build an arena in 10 days for the upcoming festival. When getting out, Sophises ask Angus why he helped them and he says that he did it because he is a very important general. Then they continued talking and Angus says that he helps the king making decisions to make the empire get better because the king is very young to make important decisions. Sophises say that he shouldn't take advantage of his power, making Angus angry. Angus then asks Sophises if his father didn't tell him anything about what they talked the last night. When Sophises remembers that he asked him what did they do to his father because he arrived home very upset. And they were about to start a fight but some soldiers arrive and tell him that his father hanged himself in the library and Sophises got scared, and the other were surprised. That night Zhang Yi were depressed about what happened to Sophises. He didn't want to feel bad so he asks Isabella what branch she decided to represent in the festival. She said that she will represent fencing and science branches. He starts bothering her saying that she should join legend in the magic branch, making her angry again. 
The next day Guru's body is getting buried. Isabella and Zhang Yi wanted to help Sophus's taking revenge against Angus but Dorona says that it was pretty difficult because Angus is the most powerful human and when he was young he was the only one who could hurt the ancient demon king. Sophus's says that he wasn't his biological father and then he starts to talk about his past when they were very poor but he was very happy living with his parents. But one night the village was attacked and his real father was killed protecting the village. But yet his death was in vain. Sophus's found his parents' bodies but not his brothers and some days later he found out that he was sold to the demon's tribe. In order to save him he trained so hard and he joined the army where he acquired combat experience and one day Giro visited the squadron where Sophia's was. And after seeing how Sophus's killed one of his partners, Giro asked why he did it. Sophus's says that he was nearly dead and leaving him alive would be leaving him with a lot of pain until death came. After that he adopted him and he treated him very well. He wanted to create along with him a world where every tribe could live in peace. Dorona asks what should they do now and Sophus's say he can only give his bets to move on. Then we see Angus talking with a hooded guy but he left after this girl's arrived. Picking the heads of some people. Completing the mission Angus assigned. Angus assigns another mission to her. He already enrolled her in the academy where she has to represent the archery branch and gives her a photo of Zhang Yi so she can find her target. The next day the forging branch goes to the old royal arena to rebuild it with the help of Mike and Acey. Both of them destroys the arena completely and gathered all the debris so it is easier to rebuild. Martin thanks them. Xiang Yi watches Alex and asks to himself if he has a lot of money since he works carrying forging material. Martin says that he works to sustain his family economically while he studies. And Alex proposed himself to win the festival to obtain money and send it to his family. Xiang Yi asks how much the champion gets and the Four Eyes says that the winner takes 1000 gold coins and also a trophy made out of solid gold. He also says that can get the rank of military commander after graduate from the academy, and he gets happy because with that rank he could get out the empire and go back to the demon tribe. While they are rebuilding the arena, Zhang Yi's superiors arrive to help them because they owe so much to Master Martin. Then Martin introduces them as their new teachers who will replace him during 10 days so they could be ready for the festival. Since Forging Branch always finished last every year, they would have a special training so that would not happen again. On the other hand, Legend was practicing his magic which was very powerful and after seeing that she was pretty confident that she would get first place thanks to him. On the other hand, Isabella was also training but she has an illusion where she sees her subordinates' bodies who sacrificed for her. And there the demon queen presents herself making her remember that everything was her fault. By wanting to sing a peace treaty with the humans, she also argues about why she trusted in Lillian. Isabella gets angry and Dorona notices the enormous power she was about to unleash so she knocks her out. Dorona is surprised to see all that evil power limit. She was even scared. On the other hand, Sophises was walking through the capital. He sees an invention he never saw before in the capital and he is also surprised to see all those citizens using objects he never saw before and when looking at other store he realizes that all those inventions were Zionese. Then he goes to the royal arena to see Zhang Yi but he is told that he went into the south forest with Alex. Before he went there, he told them to give Sophus's all the money he got inside the gold alignment mine for the military budget. But he didn't want to accept it because that was money recovered by the people entering the mine. But they told him that it wasn't the case because with Xiang Yi's machine they collected gold alignment faster and that's why prices went down because it's easier. And that's why also home prices went down. Sophus's gets happy by the fact that Zhang Yi is making the empire a place where others can live happily without feeling the pressure of money. On the other hand, Zhang Yi and Alex arrives to the south forest where they found useless wood. And they call it like that because that metal is extremely hard and they can't use it for anything. Zhang Yi wanted to corroborate how hard it was to see if he can create a chainsaw to cut it but it breaks without making even a scratch. Alex asks why does he want that useless thing but Zhang Yi says that it isn't useless just because they can't use it. But if they manage to use it, useless wood might become the empire's most valuable resource. The next day everyone is preparing for the festival and with it the king's arrival, Sophuses announces the beginning of the festival and give the order to every branch representatives to step into the royal arena. Each one of the branches steps in and the festival winner's candidates were fencing branch and the magic branch. Zhang Yi is surprised to see only one person in the cooking branch and they are underestimated estimated when they stepped in because everyone thought that they were there only to make them lose time. Participant called Nynaer was angry but his master asked him to come to avoid any trouble. After so many branches, the forging branch steps into the arena but the other are depressed because they always finish last in the festival, and Xiang Yi tries to cheer them up but Martin was depressed too. After every branch is inside the arena Sophuses explain the competition rules. The festival would last for five days and they would be separated by category. 
the first one crossing the empire and one day going through the locations to placed around the empire. And when they get through portals, they will get a coin that has a value of 10 points. There will also be 10 coins hidden through the kingdom and the first 16 contestants with the higher points will manage to advance to a new category. He also says that there also are dangerous obstacles in every location and once he ended the explanation a door appears with a very dangerous location. Everyone starts to get in and the forging branch was scared but yet they got in and that's where refinery master Yalu arrives and tell Martin to get their students tombs ready because they won't get back alive. And this is how the first part of this manhwa ends and if you want me to release a second part, comment with the word demon.